Good morning students welcome back to the lab safety course in today's lecture we will discuss about biological agents and their uh, their hazards as well as uh, we will also talk about uh, uh, different classification of biohazards and uh, we will also cover about the transmission of these biological hazards and their routes of transmission and we will also cover lab acquired infections and how uh, like uh, the biosafety or biosecurity work to control these biological hazards. So we will cover all these topics in today's lectures. Before we start this lecture, we should know about the lab, what is lab acquired infections and what are the roots of infections. Then we can manage or then we can protect ourselves while working in the uh, bio labs and of course also we should uh, remember about what kind of uh, uh, lab safety practices are required and what are the plant protective equipments we need while working in uh, biopathogen labs uh, so uh, before i should go into the details uh, we will take a couple of uh, uh, definitions those uh, uh, will be uh, commonly used in these lectures so what is a biohazard? A biohazard is also called as a, a biological hazard. So this is a biological substance that pose a serious threat to the health of a living organisms. So what are those living organisms? Primarily those are humans and the microorganisms, virus or toxins from biological sources. So they can cause you know, the threat to the human those are working uh, or those are dealing with those organisms uh, and here i mentioned biological sources are biological agents uh, so what are those uh, biological agents uh, so it includes uh, uh, those uh, which have genetically modified cell cultures and human endoparasites uh, which may be able to provoke any infection allergy or toxicity so while working in the different lab bio labs uh, so we have to deal with these biological agents and the term also we use microorganisms microbiological entity cellular or non-cellular capable of replication or transferring of genetic material so these all fall under microorganisms so whether these are the biological agents or the microorganisms uh, while we are working on these uh, entities uh, we should be very careful about uh, uh, their uh, uh, you know the uh, their spreading as well as their dissemination and how they disseminate and and uh, finally how we can protect uh, ourselves from these uh, microorganisms or biological agents uh, biohazards uh, uh, agents are classified uh, uh, into different uh, categories by the united nation numbers so these are the unique numbers because uh, of course uh, these uh, uh, biohazards or agents uh, are transported from one place to the others so for example category a have unique number un2814 so it deals with the infectious substances those are dangerous or those can cause diseases or can infect humans and similarly another category a but it has a different unique un number 2900 so these are the infectious substances those are uh, cause diseases in the animals and similarly the category b it uh, contains biological substances those are transported for diagnostic or investig uh, investigated purposes and similarly there are also some rules about the regulated uh, regulated medical waste of course uh, the different hospitals or different labs uh, or the different bio labs they are producing different waste in their labs so these waste are re, uh, uh, reusable material derived from medical treatment of animal whether this is the human or sometime also uh, from the plants but since uh, in these uh, in this lecture or in these coming slides you will see like the uh, the plant part is not actually very dangerous because the pathogens normally those are identified from the plants those are not like uh, well reported those can cause the disease to the human or uh, as well as uh, the plants but since uh, animal and the human so they have uh, more or less the uh, same system and the establishment of the biopathogens is a uh, is a uh, very easy so they can transport or they can transfer from uh, one organism to the others and since they have uh, a similar mechanism of uh, 
uh, you know the interaction so and let's uh, talk about uh, transmission uh, when sir we talk about the transmission of uh, any biopathogens to the humans uh, so this is really important to understand this figure so once we talk about the transmission so transmission is equal to the organism plus susceptible host plus the incidence if these three factors are successfully interact with each other then the successful transmission of the biopathogen happens so for better explanation you can see these circles so this is the uh, organism and here is the incident so incident breakdown uh, of uh, the barriers so incident is equal breakdown of barriers and then here is a susceptible host so this susceptible host uh, showing this circle and if you see like these three circles they joined on to this point and this point shows the successful interaction of all these three factors or the uh, you know the organisms are organisms are susceptible host and incidence so these three factors are uh, just uh, make this one point and this can cause uh, you know the physical injury or like a trauma or the effects so it means successful interaction can cause uh, this uh, uh, the effects or the disease whatever uh, you know the the pathogen is doing and if you see here the organism and the susceptible host where they meet with each other the host is well protected from organism by barriers okay so this is uh, still the uh, you know the host is susceptible but the organ but there is no incidence so it means still it's a, it is a safe and if you see this these two circles uh, uh, where incident and organisms uh, so they interact with each other and the host has uh, vaccinated again organism okay so there is no susceptibility or uh, uh, you know found because uh, uh, you know the host uh, has vaccinated so that's why in the hospital you see like in certain levels so, so almost like each individual those are working in the uh, in the hospital they need uh, you know vaccination or immunization before they starts working so these incidents are actually bio incidents all irregularities that occur while handling any biological agents so is called like bio incidents and one terminology that uh, definitely we need to understand uh, zoonotic diseases are zoonotic so the diseases those are transmitted between animal, uh, animals and uh, humans although i mentioned in the last slide animal and human viruses or the organisms easily can transmit or they can infect uh, like uh, for example the animal can uh, viruses or the pathogen biopathogen can infect the human as well as uh, uh, you know the human the pathogen can infect animal but not uh, true in all cases so sometime you know the some diseases uh, those are non uh, zoonotic uh, so they are very uh, you know unique or they only infect a particular host so maybe sometime like for example the animal diseases or biopathogens they are not uh, uh, have uh, interaction or successful uh, interaction with the human cells right so sometime it happened but uh, uh, you know the zoonotic diseases so they can easily uh, you know the the transfer for example uh, recently we have uh, covid uh, 19 uh, you know and uh, epidemic and still it is not obvious about this uh, covid 19 whether this uh, virus uh, also can transmit to the uh, to the dogs or the cats or the animals so still it's not like enough uh, uh, you know information is available before we go into detail about these microorganism transmission so this is really important to understand understand these three terminologies vector bound transmission mechanical transmission and the last one is biological transmission in vector bound transmission an insect uh, you know the take a pathogen from one animal and then it transmit to the other uh, uh, it transmit to the other host or the human or maybe like other animals it can be due to mechanically or biological so both process can be, can has this vector in mechanical transmission the disease agent does not replicate or develop inside the vector but it is simply transported by the vector from animal to the other host uh, other host so normally like there are different flies for example so the uh, flies can uh, can sit on the one organism infected organ organisms and then it can uh, go to the healthy uh, organism and then it in this way to transfer the pathogens microorganisms so it is called mechanical transmission and last one is biological transmission 
so the vectors so vectors are actually kind of a vehicle like for example the flies or the mosquitoes right so these are the vectors to transmit the diseases so in biological transmission vector take up the agent usually uh, for, uh, for example through the blood meal from an infected animal and then this uh, microorganisms replicate inside this uh, vector okay and then uh, once it completes uh, uh, some time or some life cycle inside uh, inside the vector and then uh, this vector transmit the pathogen on to a susceptible animal or the host okay so you got my point so there are different types of uh, you can say like the vectors so in biological transmission definitely it uh, stay uh, some time inside the vector to replicate or to occur or to require some proteins those are really important once this pathogen is transmitted to the susceptible organisms or the animals or the humans it can be able to cause the disease while in mechanical transmission there no need to replicate or to develop any stage into the vector so it's just a kind of uh, you know the pick and drop there in case of vector bound transmission it could be mechanically or biologically so this is a vector bound transmission so these kind of vector bound uh, you know the transmission can has both mechanically as well as biological transmission so so it is a very vast uh, you know the group of uh, 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 you know the micro pathogen transmission vectors uh, let's have a biosafety because uh, biosafety and biosecurity we uh, also touch these uh, uh, small two topics inside this lecture so what is biosafety you know biology so that the origin is a bio right so uh, that has link with the life so the combination and safety is of course uh, the combination of principles practices and technologies that measures are implemented when handling a biohazardous material okay so all the principal practices technologies those are used uh, 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 to handle any biohazard okay materials to protect so these uh, principal practices are used to protect public and also to protect experiment and our environment so this is called biosafety so the combination of principal practices technologies that may to protect our public protect environment and uh, our experiments from the biological hazardous materials so this is called biosafety how this uh, biosafety can be achieved so there are different uh, domains of uh, this uh, biosafety that can be achieved through certain bio uh, domains uh, for example uh, administrator controls in administrator controls uh, uh, you know the administration the of the university as well as rmo office they are involved to train and they also design some procedures or they can make a policy uh, that uh, that tell to the workers that uh, what are the working uh, you know the uh, yeah, the style into the labs and also uh, you know they also work on the behavior of the people okay so you know there this this is all um, all based on administrative controls the second one is the engineer controls so the in engineering controls uh, the strategies can uh, design to protect workers from hazardous conditions by placing a barrier between the worker and the hazards so in this way no need to train but there is a, just to put the barrier between the worker and the hazards uh, this is a, a physical change to the workplace itself rather than relying on workers behavior so this is not like a, uh, workers behavior or workers will whether they wants to make some changes for example if you can uh, see nowadays uh, in the uh, you know the uh, under the uh, covid 19 situation so in the different stores uh, so they put like the shields between uh, uh, you know the teller uh, to the person and with the customers in between okay so in this way they this uh, they are the engineered controls uh, to protect uh, the the workers uh, from uh, from the the third domain to achieve biosafety is the practices and procedures so these are the practices generally written methodologies or outline those are designed and so that the worker can perform their you know the lab experiments within that rules and regulations so to avoid the risk to minimize the risk of the people uh, from the equipment from the material or the environment so to protect everything so there are written uh, protocols uh, and secondly 
there are certain uh, procedures uh, so procedures are series of specific steps okay so just to follow so if these uh, steps are designed then of course the workers uh, can just follow these uh, steps and uh, finish the job or they can finish their experiments or whatever they are doing in the labs or uh, any other workplace and the last one is proper use of pp so this is of course uh, uh, personal protective equipment is uh, of course uh, this is the priority for uh, any dangers while working in the lab and similarly for other uh, danger areas where uh, microorganisms or biopathogens are involved so pp is a equipment that will protect the users against a health or safety risk at work so this is of course each uh, uh, you know the uh, task or the job has a particular pp so according to that uh, particular task you have to wear the pp and I just want to touch uh, biosecurity. Uh, so, what is biosecurity? So, biosecurity are uh, uh, the measures that uh, employ to protect biohazard material against the release of infection materials and toxins. So, this is really very important. So, so these measures are very important uh, to avoid any infectious material that can be released into the environment. How biosecurity can be achieved? So, this is can be achieved with these uh, three steps. So limited access so that only authorized persons can only enter into the particular areas and locks and key access. So it means again, uh, you know, the lock and key access is also very important. So not like everybody or anybody has access to the particular workplace. And thirdly, the cameras can also be used whether uh, like uh, this uh, uh, limitations are like followed by other persons uh, to achieve uh, the biosecurity. In this slide, you can see very different pictures where they're showing a different symptomatic, uh, you know, the infections. And uh, this is uh, all about uh, lab acquired infections. So all these whatever happen. So this is happening inside the labs. OK, so uh, this is really very important, uh, you know, the slide to understand uh, or like uh, it can also, uh, you know, uh, give the data about the lab acquired infections. For example, according to the uh, according to one study back in 1979, uh, the needles and syringes can can cause uh, you know the um, you know the infection 25%. And here you can see like the broken glasses or uh, uh, you know the other sharp needles, uh, so they can cause 16% uh, uh, and spillage uh, or suppress, uh, so they can cause uh, uh, almost 26%. Uh, and aspiration through the pipettes so they can cause 30 percent animal bite or scratches so it can cause a 14 percent and other six percent so from this data you can understand like how uh, the handling of different in instruments and different uh, apparatus is very important and also like the ppe is uh, how important uh, to while working in the labs okay uh, what are the factors uh, contributing to these uh, lab acquired infections? Uh, so you will be surprised uh, uh, to see this data again, the second study like in 99 Pike. 20% uh, uh, incidents are caused by equipment failure. So this is, uh, this is not under the control of the worker. So 20% cases are uh, caused by the equipment failure. For example, if you're working on the machine and might be there are uh, uh, there are chances uh, to uh, to malfunctioning and then it can cause hurt uh, any any worker but this 80% is uh, uh, is under our control the worker those are working okay so 80% are caused by human errors so these errors are very important to highlight to understand uh, and also to remember while working in the lab so what are these 80% lack of knowledge of biological agent so that's why this is really important when you start working about the biological and nature or the uh, about the biopathogen and lack of proper emergency responses again you are weak uh, knowledge about uh, lab safety and lack of training and uh, passing down of uh, bad habits of course always uh, thinking about this is a minor i am very strong I, so the the pathogen cannot infect me and carelessness ignorance in work practices so these are the 80 percent you know the human errors that we can easily overcome just uh, I just follow the rules and regulations uh, uh, and, and then of course the chances of uh, any infection or like any hurt is uh, very few. 
Uh, while we're talking about the uh, the biohazard, this is really important to understand uh, the roots of infection. So then how we can uh, protect ourselves. So this uh, picture uh, giving us, uh, uh, you know, the uh, uh, you know the uh, obvious uh, obvious explanation. And here you can see uh, there is a the you know the mucal membranes like eyes and nose. And of course, uh, this is the inhalation whenever we breathe. Uh, so there are chances we can take out like aerosols or droplets or small uh, particles. Uh, those are uh, suspended inside the uh, lab conditions. Uh, so in this way, you can understand, you know, how like uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the PP is important to, to wear the PP. And secondly, uh, uh, if we follow the procedure, so we will not uh, uh, allow the spread or the spill of uh, the chemicals inside the labs. Uh, and uh, this is also through the ing uh, ingestion whether this is uh, uh, through the oral so that's why always uh, whenever uh, we talk about the labs we say like drinking eating not allowed in the lab okay and of course uh, so the due to the cut uh, or like a sharp edges needles so this is also can cause uh, uh, you know the transmission of certain uh, biopathogens microorganism and injections of course so any needle because the needles are very commonly used in most of the labs so of course be careful while you are using needles so these are the main or the major routes of infection so but transmission routes you might not think of there are many others for example the microorganisms or biopathogens can be on your hands while you're working and if you did not follow uh, you know the rules and regulation about the PPE then of course uh, 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 you got infections and of course if you are working and maybe someone is coming to see you in the lab or maybe you are working computer mouse keyboards and if uh, there are and once you finish experiments and you did not wash your hand and you did not follow the PPE and then you go outside the coffee shop so might be you are spreading microorganisms on that particular place and then from other people's right so i think that and, uh, in nowadays this is the best situation to understand about uh, the microorganisms and their transmission in the covid 19 situation this is slide showing uh, again very interesting data about the lab acquired infections uh, from 2000 to 12 and here uh, you will also be again surprised to see uh, the different uh, uh, you know the analysis uh, for example uh, uh, you know the uh, uh, parenteral inoculations inhalation ingestion and contact and you can see like uh, no compliance is a 73 percent so no compliance mean failure or refuse to comply rules and regulations okay so it means again there is a negligence or uh, deliberately not uh, we want to follow the rules and regulations so again this is the highest percentage 73 percent so ignorance is 2 percent and bio incidents are 24 percent technical cases are 8 percent human cause is 93 percent you can see the c2 right there, there is a very high right so so i use the term uh, here uh, you know parenteral uh, inoculations so parenteral inoculations uh, something that uh, goes inside the body but not through like a swelling you know in the last slides i say like uh, through the oral right but uh, it may be go like a, a through the intramuscular or intravenous or like a, a sub cutaneous injections okay so it can be like a, some cuts or sharp edges or uh, you know the needles or maybe like a glass breaking glasses or uh, glasses are also can cause this parental inoculation sir okay so inhalation 46 percent ingestion uh, uh, only uh, 20 percent and then of course uh, uh, contact is a six percent so the contact is six percent and the highest of 46 percent is through the inhalation in this slide you can see different there are different factors uh, to be considered while working in the biopathogens labs for example uh, infectious doses uh, for human so in the next slide uh, there is a table so uh, that will explain better about this infectious doses uh, with some examples and secondly the availability okay the viability the presence okay the availability of infectious uh, agents in the environment so this is this factor is really very important the dose and the viability or the persistence of the infectious agents in the environment or in the lab so 
to better understand the infectious, uh, you know, the uh, in, uh, doses table. So we need to understand about what is infectious dose. So infectious means capable of being transmitted by infection that can cause infection. And the dose is a quantity of medicine or drug taken uh, or recommended to be taken at a particular time by the doctor or, you know, you, you usually use this word like the dose. But here, uh, while uh, working in the lab or in the lab safety, so this dose mean while working in the lab is dose is the number of microorganisms. Those you can, uh, you know, the take into your body uh, through different uh, uh, transmission uh, uh, routes, right? So this is that dose, not like a particular dose that uh, any uh, any medical doctor or any, uh, you know, the, that gave you to take this one for uh, uh, against some diseases. In this table, you can see uh, uh, like the different biological agents on the left side and infectious dose in this column. And you see here the root of uh, inoculation. So, for example, uh, uh, E. coli. So, if the infectious dose uh, someone can uh, take into the body like a 10 times power 8 uh, through ingestion, then of course it can cause the disease. And similarly, bacillus. Uh, uh, bacteria so it's a 8 to 50 uh, uh, power 3 and if it can uh, goes like uh, through inhalation or ingestion so this is the way like these microorganisms can enter into your body so for example this you see here the polio virus so infectious dose is only a 2 so why through ingestion so this is really very less dose which means that's why it's very dangerous so similarly nowadays like COVID-19 that's why uh, so the washing of hands and wear mask and uh, gloves etc are suggesting because very less uh, uh, you know the, the dose is even uh, can cause uh, the infection or cause uh, the disease uh, viral disease into the humans okay and some has for example uh, this influenza a2 virus so even uh, uh, less than 79 even then there is the highest and also like respiratory say you know the uh, synthetical virus so it has like 100 to 260 so intra uh, nasal so these are the different routes and these are the different doses and biological edges just for your information and might be your thinking uh, doctor and maybe you can ask question or you are thinking so it's better i should answer here so regarding the exam point of view so i will not uh, ask you to uh, remember or memorize uh, all this information uh, but uh, if you see here what are the different uh, like very two or three are very uh, common or very uh, you know the uh, very common organisms uh, those uh, i can might be like i can ask one or one question or two questions in the exams but i will not ask you to memorize all so only one or two those are very important and very commonly used in the in the bio labs or in the microbiology labs okay so assessment so this is always better so what uh, are the methods or how we can uh, do the pathogen risk assessment to analyze the biological risks so we must take into the account like mode of uh, transmission survival in the environment and pathogenicity so pathogenicity is the ability actually of the organism uh, to cause disease so this is called pathogenesis and then virulence so this is an other terminology that is we call lethality the severity of the disease how the virulent is the, uh, the the pathogen okay so the pathogens whether it has the ability to cause the disease or not okay the virulence means lethality for example if you uh, just think about the covid 19 so this pathogen has a uh, uh, the pathogenicity yes because that's why i say like always wash your hands because still it has a pathogenicity even it's a stick onto your hands and can transmit to the other person right and virulence of course this is lethal right so the you know several data shows from other countries you know this is very lethal so the way therapy so treatment or action taken to prevent the disease so this is common like a therapy for each organism so, so we have the different therapies so sometime like a different microorganisms at different temperatures so they can kill okay so some not so there are a different other like treatments relevant to the heat and maybe like a different rays can also be used geographical spread endemic native to restricted certain areas so that's why we call it whether this disease is endemic or not endemic so it means it belongs to a particular area or not so that was happened with the covid 19 so it was thinking or the people were thinking that this disease belongs to china 
alone okay so that's why the other nations were not ready okay so but once it's a spread so it become epidemic so it is not endemic it's not uh, relevant to the particular area right so this is all about today's lecture about uh, the biopathogens and in next lectures we will discuss inshallah uh, different uh, biosafety levels so biosafety levels uh, and how in biosafety levels we will discuss uh, how like a different uh, biopathogens are treated into the different bio uh, biosafety levels or into different bio labs so that's all about today's lecture so thank you so much see you then bye